Hey everyone, welcome to BCP Med. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the resonance structures of several electron withdrawing groups. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on the carbonyl, which is the C double O bond, the nitro group, or the NO2 group, and the cyano group, the CN group. And we're going to be looking at how those structures withdraw electron density into themselves and how they affect the properties of the rest of the molecule. Let's go ahead and get started. So first off, let's go ahead and consider the carbonyl group, which is probably the most prolific electron withdrawing group. Now, when we say electron withdrawing group, what we really talk about is a double bonded heteroatom that is conjugated with a pi system, or that is a double bonded heteroatom that is one single bond away from a double bond in a typical Lewis structure. So a electron withdrawing group is a good sink for electron density. What do we mean by that? Well, it means that electron density is favorably pulled into that group and a resonance structure can be drawn where excess negative charge density is favorably placed on a heteroatom like oxygen or nitrogen that better stabilizes it than say a carbon anion. To start off, let's go ahead and consider this anion, which is a 1,3 dicarbonyl. It is two carbonyl groups adjacent to this anion here, the C-. We can go ahead and think about the fact that the C- anion is really a carbon with a lone pair on it. Now, this lone pair can push into the adjacent uh, bond and kick up the CO double bond into the oxygen, right? All of these uh, atoms, the oxygen, the this carbon here, and the carbon carrying the negative charge here, all of them are going to have p orbitals because anytime we have a lone pair that is adjacent to a pi system, that lone pair is going to be situated in a p orbital, not a hybridized sp3 or sp2 orbital. So in reality, if we were to go ahead and look at what the orbitals look like for this uh, anion, we would see that the oxygen, this carbon, and this carbon all have p orbitals where these p orbitals are currently engaged in a pi bond, and this p orbital here is containing the lone pair. This lone pair can push into this p orbital, breaking the pi bond, and giving the pi bond electron density to that oxygen. As a result, we can go ahead and draw this resonance structure for the withdrawing group. We can put the negative charge density on this oxygen, which is very stable because oxygen is quite electronegative. So this resonance structure is better than this structure putting the negative charge on the carbon anion. We can also go ahead and push it towards the other oxygen because both of them are conjugated with the anion. So for example, we can take this negative charge or the lone pair on the oxygen and push it as follows moving the charge all the way around the molecule onto the other oxygen using those electron pushing arrows, right? We move one lone pair into a bond, move this bond, and break this pi bond here, putting the negative charge firmly on the oxygen on the top right. Now, this is an anion, so this is a molecule that was already formally negative. However, electron withdrawing groups can also interact with pi systems that are not charged. When it is conjugated with an uncharged pi system, electron withdrawing groups, like the carbonyl group, give positive character or electron deficient character to the carbons in that pi bond. So let's go ahead and consider this molecule, which has a carbonyl group that is conjugated with two double bonds. Right? This double bond here on the left can go ahead and push its electron density into that bond and kick up the pi bond onto the oxygen. That would give the following resonance structure, where in breaking this double bond there, we have made this carbon here electron deficient. We have robbed it of an electron pair, and it will now carry a formal positive charge. The oxygen, being the electron acceptor, the electron withdrawing group, is now going to be formally negative. We can also go ahead and instead of doing that with the left bond, we can go ahead and do it with the rightmost bond. So that can go ahead and push like that, pushing the electron density onto the oxygen that way. And that will go ahead and give us this resonance structure here. Now, in this case, this carbon becomes positively charged, and the oxygen once again has a formal negative since it is the electron withdrawing group. Withdrawing groups take on formal negative charges and create formal positives on other atoms they are conjugated with. The significance of this is that if we look at the overall molecule, here the uncharged resonance structure, we would see in reality that this molecule is going to carry significant partial charges such that these two carbons are going to be partially positive 
and this oxygen is going to have a strong partial negative character due to the contribution of those resonance structures. In addition to the carbonyl group, or the C-double-O bond, there are two other groups which are quite common in and used as electron withdrawing groups in organic molecules. The first is the nitro group, or the NO2 group, and that is shown here in this molecule. The nitro group has irreducible formal charges on the nitrogen and the oxygen to begin with. So it, the overall molecule is not charged, but because N and O cannot achieve a hypervalence, these structures, the, anything that involves a nitro group, will have formal charges on the N and the O at all times. Now, how does this work as an electron withdrawing group? Well, if we go ahead and look at this, we see that we have a double bond here that is in fact adjacent to a double bonded heteroatom, right? They are conjugated with one another. So what we can do is we can go ahead and take this pi bond here and move it into a double bond with that positive nitrogen and then kick up this bond onto the oxygen, right? So that is going to give us the following resonance structure, where now this oxygen is formally negatively charged. And I missed a positive here, but this carbon should be positively charged, right? Formally positive, because you have removed the electron density from this bond here, and you've placed it in this bond with the nitrogen. Notice that the nitrogen and the other oxygen retain the formal charges that they had in the original structure. So this resonance structure associated with the nitro group is part of the reason that the nitro group or any compound containing the nitro group is going to have a very strong dipole moment. The nitro group likes to have a dipole moment which points in this direction towards those two oxygens which both carry strong negative character. And so the nitro group pulls electron density towards itself and just like the carbonyl group, gives positive character to the carbon that is giving up electrons. So in the overall molecule, this carbon is going to carry a partial positive charge. Just like the carbonyl group, it can also stabilize an anion. For example, consider this ortho nitrophenoxide anion. The nitro group adjacent to this O- can help delocalize the anion charge and stabilize it. For example, if we look at this negative charge as a lone pair on the oxygen, it can go ahead and push down here, and instead of delocalizing the charge through the benzene ring, which we can do through other resonance structures, let's go ahead and push this double bond here onto that nitrogen, and then move the double bond of the oxygen as such, using the arrow. That would give us the following resonance structure here on the right, where now, once again, both oxygens are formally negative, and this oxygen has now formed a double bond, since that lone pair was pushed down. Notice that this carbon-carbon bond that was once there is no longer apparent in this resonance structure and has moved to this carbon-nitrogen bond, right? So this nitro group on the benzene ring allows the O- anion to delocalize and gives it further stability, far more so, in fact, than if we were to just delocalize it into the benzene ring, and that is because the nitro group places negative charge density on an oxygen, which is very electronegative and stabilizes that negative charge very effectively. So the nitro group is an excellent electron withdrawing group and is very often seen impacting things like acidity and anion stability of molecules. The other group that we should consider is the cyano group, also called the nitrile group. That is the C triple N bond attached to an organic molecule, and it is very similar to the cyanide ion, if you have uh, seen that before. So let's consider this molecule here, which is cyanomethane, or methane nitrile, but we're going to make it an anion. We're going to put a negative charge on that carbon by removing one of those protons. So if we imagine that there's a single bond here, right, between these two carbons, this negative charge can actually go ahead and push like that onto that single bond and move one of the bonds of the triple bond onto the nitrogen. Now, that's a little bit hard to see because we often don't see triple bonds participating in resonance. They certainly can, just like a double bond, but simply because triple bonds are rarer, we don't see them as much. But the anion can, in fact, delocalize and push one of the triple bond pi bonds onto the nitrogen to give us this resonance structure. Notice that in this case, the carbon has two double bonds. One thing that I want to stress is that the geometry of the carbon does not change between resonance structures. In the left resonance structure, 
we have a carbon that has a single bond and a triple bond, meaning it is going to be sp hybridized, right? The hybridization does not change in the right-hand resonance structure. The two double bonds are also going to be sp hybridized, and so the central carbon is going to have a linear geometry in either case. Resonance structures do not change the geometry of a compound, only the symmetry of the pi electrons. So just like the nitro group and the carbonyl group also affect neutral molecules, so does the cyano group. So if we were to put the cyano group on a benzene ring with no anion, right, no negative charge anywhere, this is just a CN attached to the benzene ring, it is going to have several resonance structures. The first of which is if we were to take this pi bond here and kick it up as follows, moving one of the triple bonds onto the nitrogen. This is going to give this resonance structure which, like any electron withdrawing group, is going to create partial positive character. In this case, we're going to place a formal positive charge onto this carbon here that is circled. Because this carbon now has an empty p orbital, this pi bond can go ahead and interact and move its electron density onto that carbon, breaking this pi bond and giving an empty p orbital at that carbon, which is going to look like this. We now have moved the positive character onto the carbon at the para position opposite the functional group, the cyano group, and notice the nitrogen is still negatively charged. We can do this one more time and push this electron density into that bond, right? And that will give us this resonance structure, where now this carbon has an empty p orbital and a formal positive charge. Once again, nitrogen is still formally negative. As a result, if we were to go ahead and look back at the original resonance structure, what we would see is that the nitrogen is going to carry strong positive character and the carbons at the two ortho positions and the para position are going to carry strong for positive character due to the nature of the electron withdrawing group. The fact that that cyano group is going to pull electron density through a resonance effect towards itself very strongly. It is going to take on a negative character and induce positive character in any atoms that are conjugated with it. And with that, we've actually reached the end of the content for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you like what you saw, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. To learn more, check out our other videos on the chemistry playlists, and if you're looking to branch out, check out our other science playlists as well. See you next time!